what's going on you guys welcome back to another screw toy action figure review and today we'll be looking at the marvel legends two pack of iron mongor and obadiah stain and it took me a long time to learn that name but um yeah man this 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 two pack is uh pretty great i've already had you know the opportunity to open them up play around with them just a little bit and um what i gathered so far it's it's a great great two pack uh, mostly because of this guy right here, but we'll get a closer look at him right now. And this is from the Infinity Saga line. I've reviewed so far the Iron Man and Thanos 2-pack, and actually, that's it. <laughs> I've been trying to find the, uh, what's his name, Odin, uh, the Odin figure, but I can't seem to find him. And I had ordered Surtur from GameStop, and it just said pending for the longest time, so I had to cancel that order. So now I'm on the hunt to find him. Hopefully I do here in the next couple of days. But enough of me rambling on. Let's get a closer look here at the packaging and then the figures themselves. As you can see, this is pretty similar to the Iron Man and Thanos 2-pack. You got the logo from the movie, Iron Man, Marvel Studios, Legend Series. The name of the characters, Obadiah Stane, Iron Mongor. Marvel Studios again, so you don't forget the Infinity Saga as it is from the Infinity Saga line. You get the Avengers uh, logo. I'm not sure why, but it's from the Iron Man movie. Um, a little bit out of frame. It's the same, the same mural you got from uh, the Thanos 2-pack. And then on the other side, it continues that mural, but with the Guardians, as you can see. So, same as the other. On the back, you get, uh, here we go, you get the poster from the Iron Man movie, you get a read up on Iron Mongor, which is, uh, says, Obadiah Stane suits up as the powerful Iron Mongor to threaten Iron Man. And then over here on Obadiah Stane, you get, after a long stint as second in command of Stark Industries, Stane is eager to, I can't see, I don't got my glasses, is eager to exact revenge on tony stark there we go let's read up you get all these legal uh read-ups you get you know warnings you get some legal read-ups marvel hasbro on the bottom not much there is your barcode if you need it but enough about this box let's get these figures out the package and here are all the accessories that this two pack does come with and uh, it's quite a few. We do have some new stuff and some reuse. So let's get a closer look at the reuse and then we'll get a closer look at the newer stuff. So uh, starting off with the most reused item in this two pack, it is the Iron Man Blast Effect that we've seen. Oh man, countless and countless and countless of times. Um, you pretty much get them with every Iron Man figure that you get. It is your typical Blast Effect, just in a translucent orange. And uh, yeah, it's nice that they include that. And if you want to take this off, you can to make it look more just like a straight shot instead of a blast. Um, and then you get this suitcase right here that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, came with the Stilt Man build a figure. And it is, uh, you, know, you can't open it. And I believe the Stilt Man came with cash in there, like a little piece of plastic that looked like, you know, fake cash. So that is nice. Um, nothing too crazy. And this, I believe, Obadiah Stane does use it in the movie to put in the uh, reactor that he steals from Tony, which we do have right here. Which looks really, really nice, man. For being so small, that is really, really nicely detailed. And this is a soft, kind of rubbery plastic, so you won't, you won't break that. But I wouldn't recommend, you know, bending it back and forth. But it is, you know, just a gray plastic with white painted right there in the middle. And then you can see the little blue paint around it. Unfortunately, it does not fit in the suitcase. As you can see, it just it won't close. It's too, too big. Um, so I, I don't know why they even gave us a suitcase if you can't put it in there. I guess you can make it look like he has it in there. Just closed. I don't know. But these two are nice. And then you get... The smoke effect that you can put in uh, Iron Mongor's gun, grappling gun that he has on his arm. 
and I'll show you how to pour it all that in. Uh, it does have a hole here in the middle, so you can add a blast effect. So it looks like it's shooting and smoke's going up. So that is nice. And it is just a semi-translucent milky white. So that's pretty nice. And then you get these um, bullets from the grappling gun just falling. And it's really nice how they did it. So it makes it look like the bullets are falling as they're shooting, which I, I really, really like that effect, man. And it is uh, a goldish plastic. And then you can see on the uh, outside, they kind of did give it a little gold paint wash. So that's pretty nice. And then you get this missile gun that you can put on the Iron Mongol's shoulder. And it does rotate here at the base. So that's nice. But you can't import any effects or anything. So, And then you get two sets of hands. You get a pair of fisted hands. Uh, you can see the repulsor uh, blast right here. Uh, no paint or anything. So that's unfortunate. But yeah, they're just close fist. So if he wants to punch Tony, he can. This is really nice. And then you get a splayed out hand and more of a gripping hand. So again, no paint in those repulsor blast arc reactors. So it is unfortunate. And it is a great plastic with, I believe, a small dry brushing of silver on there, if I'm not mistaken. But again, these are real nice. Nothing too crazy. But these are all the accessories it comes with. Now let's get a closer look at the figures themselves. Now before we get a closer look here at Mr. Obadiah Stain, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. We are currently sitting at 54 subscribers as I'm recording this video. Let's try to get to 100 by the end of August and to 1,000 by the end of the year. I know y'all can do it. I know we can do it. And let's get there. But enough of me begging. <laughs> let's get a closer look here at Mr. Obadiah Stain. And uh, pretty much all reuse except for one of the hands and the head. Uh, this is the Nick Fury body mode. So you can see he has the holsters in there, like the young Nick Fury body mode. Uh, it is painted in a semi-glossy paint or casted in a semi-glossy uh, plastic. So you can see just plain black all around, same shoes. As the young Nick Fury. Unfortunately, I don't have that figure, so I can't compare it. But the shirt is very nice. You got those pinstripes running up and down, and the tie is a blue. So it is very accurate to what he looked like in the movie or what he was wearing in the movie. And then his hand on his left hand is just a regular gripping trigger finger hand. So you can give him a gun if you like. I don't know why you would, but you can. And then the which one is this? The right hand does it is a brand new hand because it does come with a pinky ring because he you know he's a gangster as f uh, and it is in an open grabbing hand so if you want him to grabbing the uh, arc reactor you can and it fits in there pretty snugly as you can see so that's pretty nice because you know Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. That was my uh, <laughs> very bad Obadiah Stain impression. But yeah, man, as you can see, that head sculpt is the highlight of the figure, man. That is uh, 100%, uh, I don't know the actor's name, but Obadiah Stain from the Iron Man movie. Um, the likeness is there. It's uh, really, really good. You know, Hasbro keeps getting better and better with their uh, face printing technology. So, yeah, man, that looks really, really good. No hair on the top as he is bald in the movie. Maybe that's what he was really jealous about. Tony having a full head of hair and him being bald. But as you can see that um, it, it does have a couple imperfections. The gray on the beard isn't fully uh, there, all the way there. You can see some of that skin tone kind of peeking through. But, you know, nothing too bad. I can just chalk it up of him not having a full beard like me. But, yeah, man. I think this figure looks really, really great. Nothing too wild. Yeah. Now let's get a closer look at what you guys came here for. And here is the Iron Mongor suit, armor, whatever you want to call it, in all its glory. 
uh man this this figure is uh pretty great there's a lot of good things about this figure uh i don't really have too many complaints other than maybe he could have used a little bit of more dry brushing to really give him that you know you know battle worn feel to it but other than that it's a great figure let's get a closer look here at the figure uh so he does come with this little rocket effect as i did show y'all earlier and to attach it it's pretty simple you just it took me actually it's not pretty simple because <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out how to put it on but uh he does have these pistons back here i don't know how well you could see move my camera up a little bit more okay so i figured it out after <laughs> like 10 minutes of me trying to figure it out um so yeah as you can see it goes on the right side for some reason it attaches to the right side a lot better than it does to the left on the left it seems to just kind of wiggle around and stuff so um yeah you just push it down on the right side and it clicks and it stays on it pretty well and it does have hinge so it can move around if you like but yeah man just get a closer look here at him um he is pretty nice man so many details i'm pretty sure i'm going to be able to you know get a look at all of it as it, it it is you know very detailed all around throughout the whole body but as you can see straight on you got the helmet i believe this is the helmet that he finds in the it's been a while since i've seen the movie so this is the helmet he finds in the desert um and he uses it for his suit this was the uh mark one helmet and then you get this nice like real texture detail throughout the whole body uh, kind of like a cast iron of uh, the texture throughout the whole body i do like how they did the arc reactor here in the middle it is just a clear plastic and uh you can see all that little detail in there Let me move my lights real quick there we go so you can see that it's just a clear plastic it's a clear film of plastic you can see all that nice detail in there and the body throughout the whole throughout the whole uh figure it does have i don't know if it's the plastic that they cast it in and then they added some silver dry brushing like very very lightly but it kind of has uh, like a silver shimmer to it but i believe it's what the plastic that it's molded in i guess you can see some marbleization there but not too bad moving down the body you can see how big this guy really is these big old legs you can see all these little technical metal robotic parts all these pistons to help the legs move i really like that and you can see that the pistons and stuff do have actual silver paint on there some of the hinges in there as well you can see some of that silver paint right there inside the legs especially right here where you can see all these wires and stuff that's all painted silver which looks really nice i think if they would have done it in just a gray plastic it would have looked um, real toy like toyetic i know that's dumb to say as always as it is a toy see the pistons down there you can see those um uh, these big old feet to help them stand yeah that looks really nice and he is a hefty boy so it is hard to hold him up with uh one hand his arm does have these um grappling gun uh well no i think these are more of uh rocket launchers and they are painted red and yellow so i really do like that they do that did they paint it that sometimes we get you know like uh gun effects on some figures and they're just painted in that plastic that they're molded in as you can see in the back they're not painted moving to the back of the figure uh you still see lots and lots of details and paint you see all these pistons right here um that are painted silver you can see some of that silver painted back there you could see the gold from the bullets that the grappling gun has which looks really nice you move down to the figure you can see a lot of that silver paint right there in the hinges and in the back of the foot so yeah man there's a lot a lot of little things in this figure that i can go on and on about you can see all that texture in the in the cast iron metal you can see all these little holes right here in the shoulder pads these rivets and these pistons and you know there's just so much that you can look at um but then we would be here for several hours and these pistons right here are actual working pistons as you can see if you move his arm out that piston moves along with it which is oh there goes his shoulder pads popping out so this is removable if you like 
I don't know why you would want to, but they are removable. But the pistons do work with the arms, but if you move them too far, they do pop out right there. And uh, it's not too difficult to put them back in, I'm pretty sure. Now that I said that, I'm going to have a hard time putting them back in. Oh, nope, there it is. So, yeah, if you go too far, they will pop out. So, do be wary of that. But nothing too difficult to reassemble. Again, if you wanted to add the smoke, you can just port that in as so. And then you can add the blast effect there. And there you go. And that looks pretty dope. And you can also add this little... Um, think if you wanted to but I think this looks a lot better and more realistic and then for the grappling gun uh, shells falling out of his hand it does have a slot up here as you can see and you just port this in as so and BAM look at that and I think that looks pretty dope man yeah I really do like how they did that so it, it does look like you know those bullets are falling as he is shooting Really good, uh, really good and dope effect. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now let's get a closer look at articulation and size comparisons. Getting a closer look at Obadiah Stane's articulation. It is your standard suited body or young Nick Fury suited body articulation. He can look up that much as it is on a hinge, ball and hinge. So you can look up a fair amount up actually all the way up but then it does get pretty gappy right there he can look down all the way he can bury the chin he does have some head pivot better than most ball and hinge so he does have decent head pivot uh his arms are on ball joints and they are pretty stiff so do be careful so you can hear those clicks and he can hit a full t pose as so and he does have double jointed elbows dependent all the way upper bicep swivel typical up and down hinge and his hands do rotate a full 360 and that is on both hands unfortunately he does not have a uh, vertical hinge for that trigger finger hand and he does have a ab crunch there in the middle so you can crunch that much forward and just a bit back because that jacket does restrict it he does have waist swivel. He does have upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, and can easily kick his own ass. He does have uh, rotation here at the ankle. It can hinge not up at all. It can hinge all the way back. And he does have great ankle pivot. Now getting a close look at Iron Mongor's articulation. There is a ball joint here at the shoulder pad, so it does rotate side to side. There is a um, just kind of like a ball and socket thing going on right here, so it does swivel there. So you could swivel here, swivel here, and it does come out so you can get it in as far and out as you like. Uh, again, the rocket launcher is on a swivel, so you can rotate that around. His head is on a... Uh, dumbbell joint so popping that back on he does look a fair amount up so you can get some flying poses out of him he doesn't look too much down but he looks a fair amount as you can see uh you do get some great head pivot in there because it is on a dumbbell joint and you get side to side his arms are on ball jointed shoulders so he does hinge all the way up man so you can hit a great great t post if you like uh it does have upper bicep swivel so it does rotate a full 360 if you like but this piston will get in the way so it does have full bicep swivel single jointed elbows they bent in a little bit less than 90 so um not the greatest but you get what you need and there's no swivel there because of the way the uh, design is set up. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but not too bad. And then his hands are on hinges. Are they? Yeah, they are on hinges. So they hinge up and just actually just down. Just down because this big ass plate right here 
runs into this forearm right there so it doesn't get well i guess you can kind of do it but then the hand wants to pop off so that is unfortunate so it does it does just really hinge down and it does rotate a full 360. his upper uh diaphragm is or upper chest area is on a ball joint here at the waist so you can get some pivot this way you can still pivot oh, this way and there goes his missile launcher so he does get great pivot it can bend in that much forward and bend that much back so that is a great amount his legs are on um what you call those ball joints so he does kick this much forward which is a fair amount as you can see he can kick all the way all the way back that's great uh he his legs are on um these um i don't know how to call that they just kind of like pour it into this ball joint right here so it does rotate here shift so that's really nice and then he does have single jointed knees he can split uh not much because this runs into the waist right there so that is a little bit unfortunate so he cannot hit a split uh he does have single jointed knee i think i already said it but there it is again and he does have ankle pivot he can hinge this much forward well actually none at all and he does hinge oh, this much back which is a decent amount and now for some size comparisons here we have Obadiah Stane next to the Iron Mongrel suit and uh, bringing in obviously the most iconic character of the MCU it is Iron Man this is the Mark 85 unfortunately I do not have the Mark 3 yet uh, I do plan on getting him and reviewing him and setting him up with these two um, obviously, uh, you can see that Iron Mongor towers over these two, uh, by a lot. He's pretty much two, two of these Iron Man. Um, as you can see that Iron Man's head is a little bit big, uh, compared to Obadiah Stain. So if you planned on, you know, switching heads, uh, it doesn't really work out. Let me do this real quick. It does pop on, but then you get, um, oof. yeah, that's. That's pretty scary. But popping the head back on to Obadiah Stane. Ugh. And putting the reactor back in the sand. We can bring in Mr. Winter Soldier, aka Bucky. As you can see that um, Obadiah Stane and Bucky do scale pretty good. And uh, again, the Iron Mongor just kind of towers over him man which is crazy um bringing in another mcu baddie uh here we have mr uh, what's his name what's his name baron zemo i wanted to call him arnim zola as i was watching the winter soldier the other day there we go and here we have mr baron zemo again you can kind of see that uh Obadi obadiah stain is a little bit taller than him and Iron Mongor just kind of towers over him. So it does scale pretty well. And lastly, but not least, here we have the MCU biggest baddie. The one that started the Infinity Saga and the one that ended the Infinity Saga. We have Thanos. And as you can see, that uh, Mr. Iron Mongor over here just towers over Thanos as well. We put him face to face. You can see how much bigger he is. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can just see the size difference right there. Crazy. As Thanos is a big figure, and we put him back to back. You can just see that his head just barely reaches his shoulder. That's crazy. But yeah, man. Here we have both of the figures on the rotating base, uh, a little bit out of frame, but. I mean, there's not much you can do about that because this figure is just massive, man. Um, I will say, if you don't have the original Iron Mongor, uh, definitely get this two-pack. 
And I do say, if you do have this, the original Iron Mongor, get this two pack. Cause man, this this dude is a a huge huge upgrade from that 2008 release that released with the original Iron Man one movie um, figure line. And uh, yeah, man, you just I mean, just look at him, man. He's a sheer beast and uh, just a great figure overall, from the details to the scope to the paint to the size to just the overall figure is just a really great figure and uh essentially you're paying for this dude uh obadiah stain is just a extra an add-on uh pretty much i'd say he's like an accessory and um you're pretty much just getting you know you're paying about 60 bucks for this dude and you get a, a free extra figure with him because um you know, it is nice to have an Obadiah stain in just a suit and his regular tuxedo, or not tuxedo, but suit. Um, we didn't really need him. I mean, it would have been nice if we just got him alone and uh, the price would have been a little bit cheaper. But it is nice to have an Obadiah stain to just kind of stand in front of Iron Mongor. Uh, this is a great two-pack, man. I highly recommend it uh, for the price point. And, you know, um, you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot for this for this two pack for the price point it is i think i believe 60 something around 60 70 dollars around that price point but you're getting a lot of plastic a lot of accessories and uh a beast of a figure man and uh i did get i did get this two pack on target on the target website i ordered him on monday and received him on wednesday so it just shows how fast that that um shipping was Overall, man, I do rate this two-pack a solid 10. I have pretty much no complaints, man, uh, other than, you know, maybe just I really don't don't know what else we could have asked for. It's a great figure. It's exactly what I wanted. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I, this whole review, I was trying not to gush over this figure, but I love it, man. I love this two-pack very much. One of my favorite figures of this year. I'll definitely be putting him in my top 10 of 2021. Uh, but yeah, man, enough of me rambling on. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you're looking forward to this two-pack. I believe it's still available on Target.com. So if you want to get yourself a set, you can on Target.com. And uh, yeah, man, again, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.